you know, minimalism is to me is more of the philosophy and then subtraction is just kind of this action, right? That I'm showing where we're overlooking. And so I would think of this as like one scientific approach that is, is overlooked to get to, to minimalism. I mean, I think the, there's certainly tons of parallels, right? And certainly this, this kind of more is more mindset is another thing that we're fighting against when we're trying to subtract um, that oftentimes incentivized by economic forces, right? I mean, if you're a company that has to report your earnings every quarter, like you, you have to grow in some ways. But um, I do think, you know, one small distinction, I guess, is that minimalism could theoretically be done at this like lazy less or ignorance is bliss level. Not that it's a bad form of minimalism, but you can be a minimalist just without like adding any stuff. But to get from like, you know, my, my lifestyle with, you know, a house with two kids in it and, um, and a wife and, you know, the, all the possessions, um, that would require subtracting to get to minimalism. So I do think there's a lot of overlap. And I think there's like a, that passion is very, I think that the fact that that movement caught on is telling us something, right? It like gets back to, hey, maybe this is like an inflection point in in history where, you know, people have realized that the the route to happiness, hey, it was predominantly um, adding for a long time, but now there's also you know subtracting as a as a way to get to happiness. As a young person and young ambitious, sometimes young ambitious men, when there's a problem we immediately go to what can we add to fix this problem? What else can we do on top of the problem to somehow fix the problem? So I wanted to start there. Why do we go to addition? And where's the value in looking at subtraction in terms of our problems? Yeah, I, there are a lot of reasons why we go to addition. Um, the first and foremost is something that we've uncovered in our research and is described in the book is that we we just don't even think of subtracting is an option and hopefully that's the one we can fix in the in the time we have today <laughs> but um yeah and so for example the best thing that illustrates it i'll go even younger so my son um i was playing legos with him when he was about three and we're building a lego bridge and the problem we had was the bridge wasn't level so i turned around behind me to grab some uh grab a lego to add to the shorter column and by the time i had turned around he had removed a block from the longer column and so like that's the thinking process that's the problem. What I what happened to me right there which was that like I just immediately thought, okay, what can I add to make this thing better? And if my son wasn't there, I would have added and never even considered subtraction. So I'm kind of agnostic on whether we should choose subtraction, but I want everybody to to have all of their options and um and one of the reasons we're we're adding so much is cuz we're not even thinking about subtracting as an option. Is there an element of human nature or evolutionary psychology that we had to innovate? So we always had to add something to new technologies and innovations uh, that might not serve us in 2021. Is there just an element of every human or every species just thinks about what can we add to this naturally? Yeah, I'm glad you said every species. I mean, one of the classics examples is bowerbirds. So these are the the famous, they're, you know, famous in biology because they build these very ceremonial nests. And the, the whole point of the nests is the male bowerbirds build, a, the, build the nests and then the female bowerbirds go around and look at them and then decide who to mate with. And they never use the nests as shelter, right? That's the key. Um, and so the whole point of the nest is just the male showing, hey, I can interact effectively with the world around me and that then the females know that that's like a good person to pass down your genes with um so there's certainly like this like biological i think there's definitely a a cultural element here um when you look at the the history of civilization right when there was when we're just kind of hunter gatherers roaming around you know there's no option to kind of subtract a a freeway or even to subtract a lego right when you don't have those things the only option is to add them and so that's how our civilizations have been been built too. So I think um, there are a lot of overlapping forces that kind of contribute to us not thinking about this, you know, fundamental option of, as a way to make things better. You think that this is somewhat deeply within us, somewhat cultural and a learned experience. But then I don't know why I thought historically, what a bizarre time in history where subtraction is valuable. You think of the past, my grandparents, great-grandparents, and beyond, 
we're at we're in this position whether it is uh agriculture technology where this is the first time in history where we need to figure out how to stop eating so much in the western world that was unthinkable centuries ago so it, is this a historic almost pivot point where subtraction wouldn't have helped our ancestors, but as of right now, we have the luxury and the technology where subtraction is, for the first time, uh, beneficial, or has it always been important? No, I think you're right. I mean, I think a lot of these cases that we're talking about that where subtracting would make things better are are new phenomenons. Uh, phenomena, I guess, is the correct plural there. But yeah, I mean, that's a really insightful comment. Um, I just... Um, uh, just wrote a opinion piece about, you know, is this kind of an inflection point in our history? Or is this like a new opportunity in our history to improve by taking away? Um, so, and you could see that in everything, you know, you talked, you gave some examples with, you know, with food, um, you could see it with, uh, with our cities, right? So a lot of the cool innovations in our cities, it's like, oh, so-and-so created a pocket park, which basically means removing a building. And now there's this green space. And what makes that green space cool is the fact that there's a million buildings around it, right? I mean, it wouldn't be cool if it was just a green space in the middle of a field. So, and then also in our in our minds, right? I mean, I think that's the big one. I mean, arguably this kind of, you know, pe more and more people are meditating and, you know, trying to like clear some of this or give themselves some space in their in their minds. And I'm I'm certainly, you know, I'm all for, you know, acquisition of knowledge, but, you know, oftentimes we can we don't do enough to think about, okay, what are the things we know or things we think we know that we should kind of subtract that are just taking up space. So I, I think that, um, that, you know, this kind of, we're at this point where, as you pointed out, like our grandparents have, didn't have a lot of these opportunities to take away, but also combined with the pandemic where we've been shown what it looks like to actually take some things away, like the commuting, for example, right? I mean, nobody's saying I miss commuting. And yet, uh, here we are, I'm sure we're like so many, so much of the commuting is just going to come right back to, to how it used to be. So in many ways, this signifies uh, the luxury or how, how far we've come, how great things have been for the average person. Uh, the introduction to the value of subtraction really signifies how well we have done in a way. Is that right? Yeah. And I also, I mean, I think it's a matter of, of options, right? And it's, um, what's really cool about the framing that you're making here is that, um, you know, adding is something that has made things better, right? You know, I'm not anti-adding, I'm agnostic on, on these two options, but, you know, and what you're proposing is that because adding has made things better, hey, now subtracting is there's opportunities for subtracting to make things better too. And and adding could still make things better in certain situations. But yeah, I think um I think that's really uh if if it would really help if we thought of these two things as complementary approaches to making change. You know, and I think one of the reasons we don't subtract, um, you know, to get back to your first question, is that we think of it as competing with adding. If you add, you can't subtract. But in fact, it's like the fact that we've added should make us think, oh, well, maybe we should try subtracting too, because these are both ways to change things from how they are to how we want them to be. It's fascinating that you brought up meditation and the rise of this mindfulness movement, because I mean, growing up, if you had free time, you are going to watch TV, you're going to play video games, you're going to occupy that time through entertainment. And as you grow up a little bit more and you mature, I have 30 minutes, now I'm going to read a book, I'm going to add more information, add more value. And that's like the mature progression. But the idea of the popular apps that we see, and everybody's talking about mindfulness and meditation, it's become so popular for 30 minutes to actually do nothing, think of nothing except for your breath. That It's a really good point that you make even meditation just outlines how counterintuitive it would be 50 years ago to say when you have free 30 minutes do nothing and it's going to help you do more in some ways right right yeah that's that's true um yeah so true so this would kind of lead me to the rise of like digital minimalism and i don't know if you're familiar mm -hmm. with that book and that movement on its own for me, when I think of subtraction, what are the biggest problems in my peace of mind, my mental health, or a young listener's peace of mind and mental health? It is probably 
overconsumption of information, whether that is social media or traditional media. That's not to say social media hasn't been an incredible innovation. That it is the reason you and I are talking. It's the reason thousands of people will listen. But subtracting uh, our social media consumption becomes wildly valuable and is starting to pick up steam. So is is a part of subtraction for at least a younger reader, listener, the, the idea of subtracting certain elements or, or compulsions for using their phone? I think so. I mean, I think uh, I, I love digital minimalism and like all of Cal Newport's work. And um, I think of him as like kind of the information version of Marie Kondo, right? I mean, he's telling in, in, or, um, you know, and then you've got people who write cookbooks that are telling us to use five ingredients. And I think they're, they're all addressing the same root issue, which is that we don't think of taking away as an option. And, um, and so certainly, you know, as we're, you know, the, what digital minimalism is doing is telling us or, or helping us think about subtracting as a way to make our information better. Right. And I, I, completely agree. I've got a quote in the book where I say, you know, information in the information age is no more a problem than iron was in the iron age, right? It's, it's an opportunity if we harness it correctly. Um, And to do so, we need to, you know, when you're thinking about, okay, what am I doing on Twitter and LinkedIn? And, you know, it's funny writing a book, I've had to think about those things like, oh, well, what do you want to do on Twitter? And like, I don't know. And um, what do you want to do on LinkedIn? And then there's Instagram and it's like uh, all these platforms. And you know, if our instinct is always just like, okay, what can we do more of? What can we do more of? What can we add to our digital profile? Then there's, it's, there's only one way that's going and that's overload. I mean, Lao Tzu has this, this, what's interesting too about the information thing is it's not this new problem. Like people have been talking about this for, for ages. I mean, Lao Tzu, uh, two and a half millennia ago has this quote that's attributed to him. that's to gain knowledge, add things every day, to gain wisdom, subtract things every day. Um, which is really nice quote. Uh, and then, you know, even when, when books were invented, there was this whole, like of very respected people saying, Oh no, this is it. Now that people have books, they're gonna like, the mind's not going to be as, as firm, right? Because you don't have to remember everything. It can just be written down. And so there's like all these warnings against books and that being too much information. So, you know, we've been dealing with it for, <laughs> for a long time. And I think a, a lot of the a lot of the great things that can happen from digital minimalism are essentially come from, you know, thinking about, hey, what can I what can I take away from from my portfolio of, you know, things that I'm doing? That's a, a really funny point, but a really good reminder about how books had pushback. As far as you could remember, <laughs> people would push back on the new technology that captured people's attentions. And this is a a very nuanced conversation that I find people lack. It's either social media is the worst thing that's ever happened to humanity, or social media is the best thing that's ever happened. And you could even, in an extreme sense, talk about something like alcohol. Alcohol could be the worst thing for someone. It could be a, a great social tool for others. It's all about, I guess, subtracting to a level of balance, the the idea that more is more or nothing is nothing. So it, it sounds like subtraction is also just a, a balancing act. The talent of balance requires subtraction. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, the, the, the underlying problem is not alcohol or food or information. It's that we overlook subtraction, right? Um, that's the, and again, it, just to be 100% clear, I'm not, I'm agnostic on subtraction, but you know, it seems that we need a reminder to consider it. I just want people to be considering all of their options. And I think, um, you know, this is a, a whole class of options to make things better that we're systematically overlooking. This is a highly unscientific question, but I have to ask it because we're, we're talking nice. about subtraction oh, and I balance. Like a lot of people, not a lot of people, but there's this age old question, is ignorance bliss? Would I be happier if I wasn't on a social platform? Would I be happier if I didn't follow politics? Or is it our moral responsibility to find balance and information to be like a a valuable member of society? So if you were to guess, because there's no way of proving this, would somebody that removes themselves from reading your book, going on social media, watching this podcast, could they potentially be measurably happier, theoretically? 
Yeah, I mean, theoretically, they could be measurably happier. Certainly not from removing my book. Are you kidding me? That's this kind of like <laughs> bring them so much joy. No. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, then you're getting into kind of some like philosophical things about, you know, individual happiness versus contributions to society, right? Because if you completely check out, then how are you gonna like, kind of plug in to make other people's lives better, which I don't know, for me makes me happy. So, um, so yeah, I think, you know, the happiness, yes, but also, I would point out this, like completely checking out may not necessarily be subtracting, right? So w when it comes to information, I think what we're talking about here, that's just like lazy less, right? It's, you know, I've, I've decided not to take in any more information and I'm just going to be ignorant and ignorance is bliss. And, you know, there's a reason for that saying, but, you know, this kind of wisdom that Lao Tzu is talking about that requires subtraction, right? Because you have to take in the information, you have to then decide, oh, you know, I took this in, but it's not as good as some other information I took in. And now I need to, to subtract some. So I think it's, you know, there's nothing wrong with any of those approaches, but one of them doesn't really involve any subtracting. And, um, I think, uh, I don't know for me anyway, like the, the gold standard, I'm, I'm, I'm making a diagram because I, <laughs> and this is videotaped, right? So I can do it. So I, the, um, the gold standard I think is, you know, getting beyond this initial, you know, we start out with nothing, we build up, you know, kind of like you're talking about this arc of history, right? We, we build things up. And then once you've built things up to being good enough, then you have more options, you can keep building and you can take things away. And I think what we're talking about is once we build all the things up, then we can take some of them away. And back to the question about ignorance, it's like, if you're ignorant, you haven't built anything up, right? Um, and I, you know, so... I had this moment, I did an episode with a World War I and World War II historian, and we talked for like an hour, it was a super long episode, and at the end of it, I was just like, I think I'm 8% more anxious, and I feel like I might have been happier if I didn't know the darkness of our past, the darkness of history, so it's always an interesting conversation, but the reality is balance seems to be key, and it, it was interesting, you also... What made you anxious? I, I didn't know the I didn't world know the world darkness world. of of both of those world wars. I'm I'm 26, and I while I knew some of the history and and what I learned in in high school, I didn't know about the stupidity of why we entered the first world war and some of the other like he told me one one war in ancient Greece that was started because a wife cheated on a, a, a king and and hundreds of thousands of people died. And I was like, oh, wow, we have a really ugly history. And I don't know if that's going to serve me for my peace of mind. But I thought it was a valuable and interesting episode as potentially a warning for the future. But you, you mentioned subtraction is not deletion. Subtraction is not, you say digital minimalism is a, a responsible relationship with digital. Subtraction is subtracting what can hurt versus adding what can help. There's a big difference between subtraction and nope delete all the apps from your phone. No, don't add anything ever. Um, can, you, can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, two clear things there. I mean, one is, you know, I, one story I like is my, my buddy Ben, who was a co-author on some of the research that makes up the book. And um, he, he came to me like two years into our research and he said, hey, man, I'm taking our research to height or, or to heart. Um, I, I, my boss asked me to be on this committee and I said, no, <laughs> I was like, that's great, Ben, but I, you didn't actually subtract anything, right? You just didn't add. Um, so I think that's one distinction is we often think we're subtracting when in fact what we're doing is just not adding any more stuff. And if the problem is your calendar is too crowded or the problem is you've got too much information, like you, not adding is better than adding, but, but it's not the same as subtracting. I mean, the other key thing, the distinction here is that it's really easy to conflate like something that's been subtracted with a loss, right? And you know, like Daniel Kahneman's stuff on loss aversion, and we weigh losses twice as much as gains, basically, and which is all accurate. But these aren't losses. These these things we're talking about are actually like improvements, right? You know, that going back to my son's bridge, that was a way to improve the bridge. It wasn't like we were making a sacrifice. And when you're talking about digital minimalism, the reason we're doing that is not because we don't have enough resources to, you know, to do all the digital stuff we want to do. It's because we want to make our digital life better and we're going to subtract some stuff. So two things. One is like kind of confusing 
subtracting with not adding, but also confusing subtracting uh, or confusing less with loss, basically. If we, we think of, you know, the less that we're talking about here is not a loss. That also, it keeps bringing me back to human nature. I remember reading, I believe it is uh, the book Influence, talking about how somebody had, was there was a study where people were given a $1 mug and out of all the people that had the one dollar mug, then they were asked, "Hey, I'll buy that for ten dollars." It was a, immediately a nine dollar profit. But these people now valued it at fifteen, or they thought it was a, now a twenty dollar mug because we do very naturally. Now that I have it, I don't want to lose it. We overvalue our possessions in an irrational way, and that also just it just keeps going back to how our, the bu- many bugs in our brain. It seems. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so you're fighting against a lot of these things. And I think, you know, the book starts out with this, you know, kind of basic, we don't even think of subtraction, but then the, you know, the mug and the the loss aversion stuff, you know, that is, okay, we've thought of it. We've thought of the option of getting rid of this thing, but now I'm valuing it twice as much. So there's these other kind of forces that keep us from taking away. And I mean, you mentioned also like this you know, the bowerbird's nest, I mean, part of that, I think, probably contributes to not thinking of it, but also just, you know, displaying our competence, right? You can think about, oh, do I want to really um, edit out, I mean, you're a musician, right? Do I, I want to edit out this piece of music, uh, or the, these notes that I made, and, you know, you could have spent three hours creating this beautiful amount of notes, but then you realize that, oh, the piece is better served by getting rid of them. And that's just a hard thing to do, right? Because damn it, I did that work. I wrote that, you know, page of the essay. I, I composed that music. It's I'm not getting rid of it. Um, and so there's all these forces that kind of, kind of work against us. That is, yeah, one of the biggest lessons I've learned in my music career is when a song happens effortlessly and in a short period of time, if I'm 30 minutes into a session and we're not on the right track, it's time to restart because I do get into the trap where if I'm on day three of a session and I flew in an artist to do it, I'm trying to salvage this whole situation. There's managers involved that we're three days in, we don't have anything good. I, I start tricking myself saying this sounds good, even though I know within 30 minutes, it's very telling in a short period of time if you have something great with art, uh, but we all, we all get caught. And that's, um, that's also probably another part of the book influence when we have invested time or resources, we're even more loss averse as well. This is this sounds like an uphill battle is where I'm trying to get to. Yeah, it's uphill, but I do think, you know, like teasing out the science like you're doing helps people because when you're aware of that as your thought process, then you can be like, oh, the reason I've still got these people like trying to plug away at a track that's never gonna make it is because I've already invested this much. And so then you can think about, okay, let me take a step back and, and rethink that. Um, and, uh, yeah, but it is, it is biased against subtracting, right? Um, you know, you can think about it in stuff that you've added also think about it in terms of things that other people have added, right? That's, you know, when we're trying to make our cities better places, for example, you know, so and you know, hey, there's this highway that was built through the middle of, of my city in the 1950s, I assume somebody did like an analysis of why that was better, and I'm not going to question it, or I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. And that's another way that we kind of like, can overlook subtraction or, or choose against subtraction, even when it would better serve us in some cases. <laughs> 